Have you ever woke up with sudden sickness? Have you ever asked yourself how the body deals with injury, like burn or wound? It's all about cells. Life begins with one single cell, the zygote, and it can end by one cell. So what happens in between? Health doesn't stay forever. We get sick and take medication to be healthy again. And as every day pass, we get older and finally die. As I said earlier, it's all about one single cell. So what happens in this cell? Well, it may face a lot of dangerous conditions that would lead to its death. But it fights back. And the cells survive by maintaining certain internal conditions such as electrolytes balance and pH. And if the cell was exposed to any stress or stimuli, it tries to go along with it. And we call this adaptation of the cell. The cell basically changes its biochemical composition or morphological appearance. And this change is temporary or reversible. As everything go back to normal when the stress or stimuli is gone. Adaptation is limited and when the cell cross this line between life and death where there is no going back to the normal condition, it will lead eventually the cell death. There are basic etiologies that cause cell death, and briefly they are impaired energy production, basically anything targets the energy stores of the cell, that is mitochondria, dysfunction of the cell membrane, rupture or lysis of the cell membrane, metabolic derangement such as malnutrition, genetic abnormalities such as exposure to radiation. Energy, cell membrane, metabolism, and genes are essential for the cell life. And if the cell has encountered any of these stimuli, there is a great chance it will lead to cell death. But if the stimuli wasn't strong, the cell can adapt to a new steady state and will return to the normal condition as soon as the stimuli is removed. And the stimulus could be physiological or pathological stimuli. Physiological stimuli is a normal process and not harmful like aging, while pathological stimuli is abnormal like bacterial infection. So how adaptation occur? There are five patterns of adaptation differs according to the type of the stimuli. Atrophy, hypertrophy, hyperplasia, metaplasia, and dysplasia. So let's start with atrophy. Simply, atrophy is getting smaller either by decreasing the number of cells or decrease their size and both will lead to shrinkage of the organ and this subsequently leading to reduction in physiological function, decreased synthesis and increased catabolism. And what causes atrophy? To explain the causes, let's take this example. A young woman had a limb fracture and the splint was so tight that the blood and nerve supply was decreased. She got depressed and didn't eat well for three weeks. There are four reasons for atrophy in this case. First, decreased workload since she couldn't move her limb. Uh, decreased blood supply and uh, loss of innervation and nutrition and all these causes are pathological and aging is a good example 
on physiological stimuli in case of atrophy. The second and third type of adaptation are hypertrophy and hyperplasia. Both are the opposite of atrophy and both result in a hypertrophic organ. Hypertrophy is the increase in size of the cell. Like when someone uses resistance exercise, the size of the muscle fibers will increase. But the number is still the same. This is physiologic. And pathologically, like in case of mitral, mitral stenosis, in which the left ventricle becomes hypertrophic due to the increased workload. On the other hand, Hyperplasia is the increase of number of cells and that only happens in cells that are capable of repl replication <laughs> like skin cells. During puberty, the female breast increases in size due to physiological stimulus by hormones. And wound healing is a perfect example for a pathological stimulus. The fourth type of cell adaptation is metaplasia. Simply you can say metaplasia is a, a replacement of mature cell on a tissue with another different mature cell. For example, if we dissect it a smoker's lung, we will find that the cells that cover the respiratory tract which is the pseudo stratified columnar ciliated epithelial cells has been replaced with different cells, which is the squamous epithelial. And the body do this replacement to protect the respiratory tract because squamous epithelial cells are similar to our skin. So this protect respiratory tract from carbon dioxide. The last type of adaptation is dysplasia and it is similar to metaplasia but the difference is that the replacement happen with immature cells with nuclear or cytoplasmic abnormalities. It is reversible in mild cases while severe forms of dysplasia have great chance to develop into new plagia.